Hey guys, how are you going? In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create a bottom icon based navigation bar using HTML and CSS. So uh, just down here, we're going to be creating this navigation bar. Obviously, it's very popular um, design on mobile devices or mobile based websites. And thankfully, it is very easy to do. Okay, and also I'm including an option to set a link as being the active link, for example, profile right here. As we can see, it is a green color instead of a gray, so that's also included. So let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to create that navigation menu. So inside the text editor, uh, the first thing to do is to create a new directory called source and inside this source directory, uh, we're going to be containing our single CSS file called nav.css and of course this right here is going to contain all of these styles for the navigation menu. Okay, And then of course just include uh, this CSS file inside the HTML head by saying link for a style sheet at uh, source and then nav.css. Okay, so now uh, we can move on to doing the HTML for the navigation menu. Okay, so inside the uh, body, we're going to firstly uh, start with creating a new navigation element with a class of nav. So we can say nav right here with a class of nav. Okay, and this will be the main container for the navigation menu. Okay. And then inside here, we're going to be creating uh, five elements or um, basically each one of our links. So uh, for this, we're going to be uh, creating a new div uh, with a class, sorry, you know what, a new anchor tag, so a new a tag with a class of nav underscore underscore link. So as usual on my channel, I'm using the BEM or block element modifier CSS naming convention for my classes. However, you can name these classes whatever you like. Inside the href, I'll put a hash just for now. And this right here is going to represent a single link or icon on the bottom there. So now inside our link, we need an actual icon to display and then of course a label for that icon. So we're going to be using Google Material Icons as our icon library. So let's go inside the browser uh, right here and head to this page. I'll leave a link to this in the description, but you do want to go inside this page right here and just scroll down to uh, this section where you can copy this link tag right here and just paste it inside your HTML. And basically uh, that right there is going to install the icon library for use on your web page. I'll leave a link to this in the description also. Okay, so now as we can see in my example, I used five different icons. I used the dashboard, the user icon, devices, the lock icon, and the settings icon. So let's go to this page right here and do a search for dashboard. Okay, then if we scroll down, we can see that I found my dashboard icon. So if I was to select it and then go right here, it shows me the usage of that icon. So as we can see, we need to create an i tag with a class of material dash icons and put the text dashboard inside there. So uh, let's go uh, back inside the text editor and create that element right there with that class of material dash icons. Then of course putting dashboard inside here. So now the dashboard icon should be displayed on the web page. Okay. We're going to also be adding a class to uh, to uh, this uh, icon element, and this is going to be nav underscore underscore icon. Okay. And now for the actual label, uh, this will be done through a span tag with a class of nav underscore underscore uh, text. Okay. Then inside here, we can just say, for example, dashboard. Let's just save this now and refresh to see our progress. And we get something like this. As we can see, of course, the icon library is working correctly. And essentially, that is all we need to represent a single link using the HTML. So I might just copy and paste what I had previously in my example. So I'll copy that and just paste it down here. Okay, and as we can see um, uh, in uh, what I pasted for the profile uh, link, I've got an extra class on my anchor tag, and that is nav link uh, dash dash active. So that, of course, right there is a modifier class for my nav link to basically say that that link is going to be active. Of course, 
uh, we'll see more about how that's going to work a bit later on when we do the CSS. But now let's just save this now and then refresh the page once again and we currently have something like this. So now um, that is basically all we need for the HTML. Let's move on to the CSS for the navigation menu. So for this we're going to start by uh, setting a property um, on the body element. So we're going to target the body right here and we're going to be setting the margin to be 0, 0, 55 px and then 0 and basically this right here is going to set no margin um, for every side of the body aside from the bottom with a 55 px margin. So basically just making space on the bottom there for the navigation menu. We can now target the nav class and for this one we're going to be setting a position of fixed and a bottom of zero and also a width of 100%. So basically this position right here of fixed ensures that our navigation menu is going to be floating on top of everything else on the web page even when we scroll down and a bottom of zero of course places it on the bottom of the page and the width of 100% of course makes it the full width of the page. Okay, We're going to also set the height to be 55px. It's important that this value right here is the same as this one up here um, just to make it nice and flush. Okay, We're going to also set the box shadow to be 0, 0 and then 3 pixels and then RGBA 0, 0, 0 and then 0 0.2 um, for a nice subtle box shadow on the top of the navigation menu. We're going to also be setting the background color to be white. Okay and also a display of flex. So using a flex box here to ensure that our icons are evenly spaced in the container. Okay, we're going to also be setting an overflow X of auto. And essentially this one right here is going to extend our compatibility or support for smaller screen devices where maybe um, their width is too small for all of the icons to fit. This right here is going to ensure that um, the user can scroll if they need to. Okay, let's now save this and refresh the page and as we can see we get something like this. So we are essentially done with the main navigation container. We can move on to styling each one of our links. So let's go back inside here now and target the nav underscore underscore link class. So for this we're going to also be using a display of flex. Along with this we're going to say flex grow and we're going to be setting this to 1. Okay, And this flex grow of 1 basically just means that our navigation links are going to try to take up um, an evenly spaced amount across all of them. Okay. We're going to also be setting a minimum width of 50px and uh, this property right here is going to work in conjunction with this one up here um, to create that scroll bar and basically just saying that um, our links must be 50px at a minimum. And of course that also helps with the user actually being able to click on the link um, to make sure they're not too small. We're going to also say overflow and set this to be hidden and also a white space of no wrap and essentially these two properties uh, work a bit closely together to ensure that the text does not overflow onto a new line so a single line of text and also um, the text does not expand um, the width of the actual navigation link. Okay, um, Let's go up here now just below the display of flex and we're going to also be setting uh, the flex direction and we're going to be setting this to column and also an align items of center. Okay, so I did forget to mention uh, the reason why we uh, were using a flex box for this navigation link and essentially it just makes it easy for us to uh, position the icon and the label. So of course a flex direction of column ensures that the icon is on top of the label and an align items of center ensures that they are closely together in the center of the actual uh, container for each one of our links. So I might stop talking and just save this and then refresh and we get something like this. So we can see our flex box is working perfectly fine and we have our icons up here positioned above our, um, our actual text. Okay, um, so now let's go back inside here and move on 
Uh, so for this, uh, we're going to also be setting a justify uh, content of center, okay? And we're going to be going down here now and working on a bit more uh, cosmetic stuff. So we're going to be setting a font family. I'm going to be setting this to uh, sans serif just for now. You may wish to uh, change this uh, font family a bit later on, okay? And also a font size of 13 pixels. Um, so a bit smaller than the default of 16 pixels, it just helps to ensure that our icons don't take up too much width. We're going to also set the color to be a medium gray, so triple four, and a text direction, sorry, a text decoration of none to remove the default underline uh, created by uh, anchor tags, okay? We're going to also set the WebKit tap highlight color to be transparent. And this right here is just going to remove uh, the default blue highlight color when you click on uh, each one of our links on a mobile device. Okay, uh, we're going to be replacing this functionality with a hover state uh, very shortly. Um, but we're also going to be setting a transition down here with a background dash color at 0.1 seconds, ease in and ease out. So of course, when we hover over our link or we click on the link, we want the background color to change. The transition right here is going to make sure it looks nice. Let's save this now and then refresh the browser once again and we get this right here. So obviously looking pretty close to the final product right here. Um, I do want to mention that the justify content of center right here has pushed down our icon and our uh, label. Okay, um, so now let's move on to creating that hover state to change the background color when we click on the link. So for this, we're going to be targeting uh, the nav underscore underscore link class with a pseudo uh, class of hover. So um, on hover, we're going to set the background color and we're going to be making this a light gray. Okay, let's save this and try again and hovering over the icon now gives us this right here. Okay. Let's go back inside here now. I'm going to be targeting the nav link and then dash dash active class. So for our active link, we're going to be setting the color to something different. And for me, I'm going to change it to the decode green color. That is 009578. Let's save this here and then refresh. And as we can see, our icon or sorry, our link with the class of nav link active is now uh, changed to a color of green. So pretty straightforward. Um, so let's move on to the last part of this uh, tutorial and that is going to be changing the nav icon and the nav text. So for the nav icon class, we're going to be setting the font size. We're going to be making this slightly smaller than the default. Let's save this and refresh and now our icons are a bit smaller. Of course, it just helps with spacing and things like that. Um, depending on your icon library, if you're using Google Material Icons, as we can see, we made it from 24 to 18. Of course, different icon libraries are going to have a different font size, so just make sure you're setting it accordingly. Okay? And that is all we need to do to create a bottom icon based navigation bar using HTML and CSS. I did mention earlier that we needed to change the nav text class, but fortunately that is no longer required. It was just a mistake on my part. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.